Good afternoon and welcome back to another Bar by Bar analysis here on my channel. Today is April 22nd, 2022, and today we're looking at a 2000 tick chart for the E-mini S&P 500 futures market. The only indicators I like using are the 21 EMA here in blue and the 200 EMA indicator in magenta, as well as a volume indicator that I've recently introduced into my trading. We primarily use price action and overall context of the market in order to pr place trades. And so that's definitely what I like to focus on. Price action is king. Now, as we do on this channel, we'll go ahead and analyze some trades. We'll go bar by bar, see what kind of setups we saw for today. I had a good trading day, another successful green day with this Apex eval. So very happy about that, staying nice and consistent. I found the market relatively easy to trade today. I, I didn't notice any crazy fake outs or anything. There was one trade that I ended up taking a trap on and I got a live trade video recorded for that. So once we get to that point in the, in the video, I'll go ahead and, and pull that video up and you'll see the live trade exactly how how it played out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this analysis. As we have done, we draw a level of resistance here at top for overnight highs and a level of support down here for overnight lows. I've already kind of pre-marked some of these channels that we're working up and down in this trading range with prices moving up, break attempt to test these overnight highs. Prices are rejected, fall back down, don't quite make it to the opposite end of the range before coming back up again, finding level of resistance off this 200 EMA and then pushing back down again. Nice short-term trend working down with a break in new low. So at this point, not looking for any shorts. And I should preface this by saying I, I arrived late to the market again today. I'm trying not to make that a habit, but I don't think I started trading until maybe like 8.45, 8.50. But regardless, the market opens up at 8.30 and immediately you have this, this potential trade here, second entry short off EMA. The only thing I don't really like about it is we had this short term trend that was working down with a break and move, move to a new low. So I'm anticipating that this downtrend has played out. But when you're in, in doubt of whether or not to take a trade, sometimes, you know, you can either pull up a volume indicator or look at RSI or MACD or whatever else you, you use. I just I've enjoyed working with this volume. We had prices that were moving down, small, um, slight decrease in amount of volume as it's going down, coming back up to the EMA. And then as prices push down again, volume is building, volume is building up as more traders are entering the market. Prices come back up to the EMA and you have a new low with the first entry short, second entry short as volume is increasing. So it's looking like we have a uh, nice bearish pressure in the market. It's still, I'd still consider it a risky trade just based on price action, because again, I, I only use volume as an indicator. Sometimes we did have a short term trend with a break in new low first entry short, second entry short ends up triggering. And those that decided to enter early would have definitely gotten a scalp. But again, I wasn't trading in that moment. So, you know, it's kind of hard to, to think psychologically where my head would have been at that time. We definitely have selling pressure as prices continue down to the opposite end of the range here. And as prices continue down, we start considering the channels that we have at play here. Now you can definitely draw this channel a lot earlier, but it's nice when you get this additional price action. Prices are holding neatly. Again, I think I started, I came into the market around 840-ish maybe. So I saw this overshoot happening of this trading range, but we're in a nice steady channel here, both 21 EMA, 200 EMA starting to round out and move down. Now, once we made this new low, what I decided to do, and this is not necessarily a good idea, but what I did was I extended this channel just a little bit to try and accommodate that price action, but it was a bad idea. Now I'll, I'll explain why in a second, but in this moment, when I had this channel at play, we had prices that made that new low. We're coming up for a first entry short prices come up nice bearish signal bar, second entry short. I ended up taking this trade and I thought it was a you know great trade to take. I ended up getting the scalp before prices came back up and you get this lower high, what appears to be a, a nice, very nice looking lower high. Right, you're in this downtrend, EMA is moving down, you had a second entry short that triggered with a nice bearish bar, and then this lower high is almost like additional confirmation reason to go short. And I had an order ready. I was literally ready to enter this trade and I pulled out of the trade. I decided not to take it. And the reason why was because I had extended this channel and I really shouldn't have done that. Prices were holding neatly here within this channel and we had an overshoot. 
Now, when we have an overshoot that generally leads to momentum generated to the opposite end of the channel, you'll see that multiple times in the videos that I make, or even when you're analyzing the charts by yourself, you'll notice these sort of things happen. So what I thought was a good trade was actually something I felt I got somewhat lucky on. This was more of a, an aggressive second entry short. This lower high, I didn't end up entering. But for those that did, you would have immediately been stopped out and trapped. And then after this happened, it was a nice reminder that I can't be messing with the channel too much. Once I have that drawn in and prices are being held nicely, I don't want to immediately accommodate this price action just because I don't want to recognize that overshoot. So a bit of a learning lesson today, but that's, that's essentially how I saw it. Now with the overshoot in mind, and possibly leading to uh, generating momentum to the opposite end of the range. You know, if you're really in, in tune with the market, you're really dialed in, you see this lower high, you're not phased by it. You say, okay, I'm not going to trade that lower high, but I am going to trade the trap. I'm going to trap everyone that's trying to go short there. And you use this overshoot as justification to go long and ride this momentum up and out of this channel. So you could potentially enter on a stop limit order one tick above so that as you're stopping everyone out, you're going to ride that up and out to the opposite end of this channel. But that's fairly advanced. I, I didn't even recognize it in the moment, but, but yeah, post analysis, that's what you could potentially see. Now prices were continuing to range. You have the EMA kind of oscillating up and down a little bit. So you don't want to forget to draw in your trading range to accommodate the price action. We get this nice rally up. I didn't necessarily see a way to enter this. You had the new high with the first entry long, second entry long above this bearish signal bar. Not interested in that. You could potentially take a higher low, but nothing sets up. You do have a slight short-term trend working up, but it's going directly into the support level which now acts as resistance for this overall trading day. 200 EMA is also coming down as well. As you get additional price action here, you extend the range maybe just a little bit because you want to accommodate that price action. We have a new high here with the first entry long. Prices come down looking for that second entry long that triggers above this doji bar. We also have a new low with the first entry short. Prices come up, trap everyone trying to go long into the resistance level of this range. We get a second entry short if there's a trigger below this bar. Now, I didn't end up taking this trade, but I definitely like the setup when I see it. The overall context is a short bias. We are in this trading range, selling at the top of this trading range. You're also alleviating the hurt from people that tried entering long here, because as prices come back down, you're gonna stop all those people out that tried going long. Additionally, you have room back to the EMA here. So depending on how many points you're going for, you beat out of this trade for sure. Maybe slightly aggressive. I didn't take that in the moment. What happened was as prices came down through EMA, I saw this bearish bar form, and let's see if I can make it just a little bit bigger. I recognize this as a lower high. We had a prices come down with a close, and these wicks were very, very tempting to go short. Also finding that level of resistance right here at these overnight lows. I really liked this trade, and that's where I entered on a stop limit order, and prices ran their way down. Now, we were just coming from the highs of this range, and where do we anticipate prices are gonna go? Back to the bottom of this range, and that's exactly what happens. Now, with the movement of these prices working down, this is a great example for that overshoot. You have this channel at play, and then prices overshoot just a little bit to the bottom side of this channel it doesn't generate momentum to the opposite end of the range. So this is one of those moments, yeah, you can definitely expand the channel, accommodate price action the best you can. Now, as we had this move that was working down, I was looking at volume, and I saw as prices were going moving down, volume was increasing, a lot of sellers coming into the market. Now, we don't forget price action is king, so we have this short-term channel that's working its way down. We have a break looking for a new low, and we get it, right? We had a break of this channel looking for a new low. Notice what's happening to the volume. I have to adjust just a little bit here. So volume is increasing. And then as it finds a support level here at the bottom, you see volume decreasing. There are not a lot of buyers and sellers. People are waiting it out. So being able to recognize that, having that break in new low, my thought process was this downtrend is played out. We're going to look at moving our way back up. And there's the real new low. Prices come up for a first entry short, and we're looking for a second entry short, which never triggers. Prices continue moving up, and we had a second entry short below this bullish signal bar. Now, I'm not looking to go short after this downtrend has played out and I've seen how volume has reacted at the prices down here. And this is where I recorded this, this live trade. What I did was I entered one stop. I entered on a stop limit order one tick above the signal bar here because I knew what was going to happen as second as people were taking the second entry short trying to go short. I knew that when prices reversed and stopped people out, prices were going to run up. So here's the video now and we'll be back in just a second.
So you'll see how quickly that worked out. I entered on a stop limit and prices shot up right away. I was in and out so quick. I was a big fan of entering that trade. Prices worked their way up to the support level of this trading range that we had in play before pushing back down below EMA. We have this short-term trend that's working down with a break looking for a new low. We have this new low here with a first entry short. Prices come up nice long wick with the body of the candle close to the EMA. Second entry short if there's a trigger below this bar. Very nice and easy trade to enter on. And I have to check real quick here. 6 to 4.50. So that's a 6 tick move before prices come back up. Now I've been going for 4 ticks so I was out of that trade nice and quick. Now as prices were continuing to work down I was trying to figure out what kind of pattern we had here. I wanted to see if maybe we were potentially dealing in some sort of trading range. And so that's initially what I had. We had a new low with a first entry short. Prices come up. I didn't like the signal bar here, so I didn't end up entering on a second entry short here. For those that did, I think you would have been out. But when I started seeing prices touch the bottom of this trading range, I didn't want to go short directly into the range. We also have this bearish imbalance here as we're making lower lows, we're making lower highs, EMA is trending down. I was hesitant to to try and go long, trade any failed breakouts. I didn't want to do that. But if I guess if you were going to do a counter trend trade, wait for a better confirmation. Don't just go long above this bar. Wait for a higher low to form. There's a higher low right there. You could enter here if you have enough room to the EMA. You would have been out right there. I've been noticing those working a lot. We had a new low first entry short. Second entry short that fails. I didn't recognize it in the moment. I guess, you know, if we're, if we're coming back from the lows of this range back to the highs, you could look at trading a failure, I guess. It just depends on where you'd want to enter if you wanted to enter one tick above this signal bar, because that's where the stops are. So as the stops hit, prices are going to continue running up. That makes sense. Or if you want it to be a little bit more aggressive, you could enter one tick above this doji bar. But I'm just not a fan of taking a, a failure with a doji bar like that. Doji bar just it's it's a pause in the market it's indecision we don't know exactly what's going to happen prices come up for a new high first entry long second entry long terrible signal bar I didn't want to enter long there higher low on this Doji bar not interested in that and it's fairly clear at this point we are in a in a bit of a trading range prices are just not choosing a specific direction we do have a new low with a first entry short second entry short with room to the EMA this could be an aggressive trade if it triggers I guess it looks aggressive but now when I think about it when I had when I drew in my tr my trading range I actually think it looked more like that it, it probably started up here but then I moved it down I can't remember exactly how I had it so that's definitely that's a little bit closer to the highs of this range we want to sell from the highs of this range you could argue that is potentially aggressive just because we had this strong push above EMA and we're sort of trending upwards so you're trading counter trend but overall context is down 200 EMA is still working its way down as well you have room to the EMA you can get out for a scalp and that's exactly what happens and now we fast forward a little bit. We have this huge down move. Really no way I, I think I would have entered this. We're not even, we're not close to the EMA, but prices are trending down heavily. And as we know with price action rules, we have a break looking for that new extreme. We have a break looking for the new low. We get the new low. So at this point, this downtrend is played out. I'm not interested in going short. I want to see how prices are going to react at EMA. So as prices come up, we have this new low with a first entry short. Prices close above EMA. Second entry short triggers below this bullish bar. Not interested in going short, but I'm not totally against the idea of potentially going long as well and riding the stops that people have in place here. Next bar prints, you get a nice bullish bar. EMA is flattening out a little bit, but with how bullish the bar is, this could be an aggressive entry that you take, right? If you put your stop limit order one tick above this signal bar, the next bar prints, you would have helped people get out of this trade because everyone that's trying to go short, the move has already happened. We had a break in new low, so don't try going short there. Recognize that and then capitalize on, on, on entering on people's stops. So you can either enter one tick above this signal bar here or one tick above the little swing here. You would have been in this trade. Prices come back down. Now, while this is a aggressive trade, I saw this as more of a comfortable trade I would have taken. It's a higher low. After this downtrend is played out, we're looking for prices. We're basically looking for a reversal pattern, to be honest. You enter the market one tick above the signal bar and you ride that up for a scalp. And then as prices come back down to EMA, another higher low opportunity you know, at this point, it might be a little bit risky, but then when you draw in, I guess if you, when you draw in a trend line like this, 
prices are holding very nicely. EMA is rounding out. You know, I didn't I didn't see it, and so I didn't trade it. But that's a nice higher low that I guess you could take too. It's worth the risk as prices continue trending up. And yeah, you get that scalp for sure. And maybe even a runner. I don't know how high this goes. Okay, so you would have ridden prices to the top of this channel. But by this time, um, I would have been done trading for the day. And I was, I was three and zero for the day, so very happy about that. As always, I don't, I don't want to make these videos too long, but you can see prices are continuing to move down. Clear and easy to see this channel. You could probably draw this channel in different ways, but you have a break, move to a new low. I wouldn't be surprised if prices push back above EMA and possibly led to a reversal. But ultimately, the whole day was bearish. We're just trending downwards. 200 EMA is holding downwards as well. So if we continue pushing lower, it's also not a surprise either. But anyway, that's the video for today. I, I appreciate everyone that's watching. I hope that you guys find these videos beneficial. I love making it. I have such a passion for trading. And it's always really fun and enjoyable to, to read the comments and see the, the benefit that people get from these videos. So if you like the video, please leave a like, subscribe, turn on post notifications so you know exactly when I post these videos. And feel free to share it with a trading buddy. You never know who, who could find these videos very beneficial. But regardless, it's always a pleasure. I hope all of you have a great weekend and I will see you next week.